We are joined now by the longtime owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Mark, I, I know you're planning to go to Orlando when things presumably get started again. But now, 100 days since the season, season shut down, what are you thinking about the NBA's readiness for this return for games again? I mean, th this has been our entire focus since March 11th. How do we get back safely? And I think the NBA is doing everything possible. We're learning from what others are doing. We're dealing with the, the best in, in the fields of um, all related fields, all medical fields, all sci uh, scientists. We're just we're talking to the best of the best. And so if there's any way we can do it, we'll, we're going to pull this off. Mark, we're seeing more new cases than ever before in the last few months in the state of Florida. So how does bringing everyone to Disney World, even in that bubble, make sense in the context of what's going on in the state of Florida? Well, I mean, it, you know, when you have a controlled environment or as controlled as you possibly can get it, I, I think we're trying to emulate what we do in our homes, you know, where we feel safer, where, you know, people are getting tested, people are being monitored when they come into the environment. Um, there's continuous information. Every precaution that possibly can be taken, that's exactly what we'll do. Mark, Kyrie Irving, Dwight Howard, several other players are saying that it sends the wrong message right now for the NBA players to be playing instead of focusing on social justice issues. They're against playing, some players. What are the chances that this movement um, will prevail? and that there won't be games. I don't know. I really don't know. But, you know, I encourage them to speak up and say what's on their mind. It's important to hear their perspectives. It's important to listen to them. And, you know, there's 450 guys that, that are participants. And, you know, in aggregate, we'll see what they have to say. You know, it's our job to position the, the league to return. And, you know, hopefully guys will want to play, but it really comes down to them. One of the issues, Mark, of course, um, there are new league standards and guidelines regarding those who might be at high risk from the coronavirus, those who could get seriously ill, and barring such people from taking part in the restart in Orlando. Uh, there are concerns from those in the uh, Coaches Association, including, of course, your coach, who is the president of the association, Rick Carlisle, 60 years old, that... Uh, Coaches such as Greg Popovich, who's 71, Mike D'Antoni, who's 69, Alvin Gentry, who's 65, might not be allowed to be with their teams and that the rule could jeopardize their future employment. What are your thoughts about how that's going to be handled? I mean, I have to defer to the NBA and the scientists and the doctors that we're getting advice from. I mean, they're the experts. I'm certainly not. Um, look, I'm 60. I'm one. And, and so... You know, it's obviously a concern, but we're going to take every precaution necessary. Um, and again, I think in a controlled environment or as controlled as we can make Orlando, you know, because we're doing testing, because we're, we're taking every possible precaution, as long as the doctors and scientists are giving us OK, you know, we should be all right. But again, I'll defer to them. Mark, again, on, on the social justice issues, as you well know, the NBA has a rule that players must stand for the anthem. I believe the words are in a dignified posture. It's been on the book since 1981, pre-David Stern. Mahmoud abdul Rauf was suspended back in 96 for not standing. 2016, Adam Silver said players were expected to follow those rules. What are your thoughts about the league's rule on standing during the anthem? You know, hopefully we'll be adaptive. Hopefully we'll, you know, allow players to, to do what's in their heart, you know. Um, whether it's holding an arm up in the air, whether it's taking a knee, whatever it is, I don't think this is an issue of respect or disrespect to the flag or to the anthem or to our country. I think this is more a reflection of our players' commitment to this country and the fact that it's so important to them that they're willing to, to say what's in their heart and, and do what they think is right. So, you know, I'll, I'll defer to Adam on, on any final judgments and, and Michelle Roberts. But the reality is, I, you know, uh, my hope is they'll, we'll let the players do exactly what they think is the right thing to do. Back in 2017, you said this is America and I'm proud of people who speak out civilly. That's who we are as a country. 
Uh, I'll be standing there with my hand over my heart. That's what you said, talking about the anthem, and I think the players will be standing too. I expect them to be. How would you feel now if your players decided they wouldn't stand? If they were taking a knee and they were being respectful, I'd be proud of them. You know, hopefully, you know, I join them because I think we've learned a lot since 2017. I think we've evolved as a country. And this is really a unique point in time where we can grow as a society, we can grow as a country and become far more inclusive and become far more aware of the, the challenges that minority communities go through. And so, you know, I'll stand in unison with our players, whatever they choose to do. But, you know, again, when our players in the NBA, you know, do what's in their heart, when they do what they feel, you know, represents who they are and look to move this country forward when it comes to race relationships, I think that's a beautiful thing and, and I'll be proud of them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.